5G, aka fifth generation cellular technology, has a download speed of one gigabyte per second, which means you can download an entire movie in about a second. For movie reference, refer to Skynet from the Terminator movie. Now, for its incredible speed, 5G uses what is called millimeter waves, abbreviated as MMW. These are radio signals having frequencies between 30 and 300 gigahertz. While these higher frequency bands have a lot of capacity, a higher frequency equates to a shorter wavelength. Shorter wavelength equates to a shorter range, which means they can easily be blocked by buildings, cars, trees, planes, etc. Now, to get around this problem, 5G requires what are called small cell antennas which must be deployed more densely than 4G antennas at roughly every 500 feet or about one antenna every city block. At the end of 2017, there were approximately 320,000 4G cell antennas in the U.S. A study by consultant firm Accenture estimates that 5G will require 769,000 small cell antennas, which is an increase of 449,000 new antennas. Now, small cell antennas are about four feet tall, with some as large as a refrigerator. The cell phone operators plan to affix them in the street lights, the utility poles, or place them on the ground, sometimes disguising them as mailboxes. 5G waves are ultra-high frequency, ultra-high intensity, whereas 1G, 2G, 3G and 4G use between 1 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. 5G uses between 24 and 90 gigahertz frequencies. Radio frequency waves dissipate with distance. This makes sources closer to you far more dangerous than sources that are further away. Duration of exposure is also an issue. Small cell antennas will be activated 24-7 for your convenience. On June 9, 2017, a group of scientists with the International EMF Scientist Appeal submitted a letter of comment to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, FCC for short, in opposition to FCC docket numbers 17 through 79 and 15 through 180, which would allow streamlined approval of 5G infrastructure to be built on existing utility poles in greater numbers than the current cellular antennas. Now, the group is comprised of over 225 reputable scientists from 41 countries who have peer-reviewed publications on electromagnetic fields. Their letter calls on the FCC to critically consider the potential impact of the fifth-generation wireless infrastructure on the health and safety of the U.S. population before proceeding to deploy this infrastructure. Now, for some strange reason, the FCC is urging an accelerated deployment schedule for the fifth generation wireless infrastructure to be installed pervasively throughout the U.S. Of course, it's being done without public health review of the growing body of scientific evidence that includes reports of increasing rates of cancer and neurological disease that may be caused by exposure to EMF from wireless sources. Now, they go on to say that some of the effects can include increased cancer risk, genetic damage, structural and functional changes to the reproductive system, learning and memory deficits, and neurological diseases along with cell stress, etc. Now, 5G radiation is similar to the waves used to cook food in your microwave. Because of that, Dr. Yael Stein of Jerusalem's Hebrew University sent a letter to the FCC commissioners, the U.S. Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor and Pensions, and to the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, outlining the effects of 5G radiation on human skin. Now, according to Dr. Stein, over 90% of microwave radiation is absorbed by the epidermis and dermis layers of human skin, essentially making it an absorbing sponge for microwave radiation. Also, the sweat ducts in our skin's upper layer act like helical antennas specially designed to respond to electromagnetic fields. In essence, our bodies will conduct 5G radiation. And how will this affect our babies, pregnant women, and the elderly? Do they care? Probably not. As a matter of fact, the U.S. Department of Defense already has a weapon called the Active Denial System, which uses millimeter waves to make people's skin feel like it's stinging or burning. 
turn this weapon up a notch, they could microwave people to death. Now, Trump seems to be all too excited about this 5G rollout. He's praising it as some sort of breakthrough, talking about its incredible speed, and it'll transform the way we'll learn, work, communicate, and travel. He said it'll make American farmers more productive, American manufacturing more competitive, along with better and more accessible health care. First of all, competitive against what? Competing for what? Against whom? Why? In January 2017, Trump appointed Ajit Pai, a former lawyer for Verizon Communications, to the position of the director of the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, otherwise known as the FCC. Now, understand that Pai has been an advocator for the week of state and local regulations regarding 5G deployment. 2018, another Republican, FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr, announced a plan to streamline the environmental review process for 5G infrastructure, claiming it will cut costs for the telecommunications companies by as much as 80%. Now, to bolster their case, Pi and Carr have trotted out words designed to keep every red-blooded American going. Bring high internet to underserved areas, or close the digital gap, or keep the digital pace. Now, the telecommunications companies are pushing to build 5G systems as quickly as possible. They have even deployed a small army of lobbyist working state legislators to pass laws that restrict local oversight of 5G. Why the rush? And why can't we have a say?